Cube's new album it drops tomorrow. I'll tell you how you can win. Make sure you lock it in. Are you ready to kick off the countdown? He is getting ready to kick off his OMG tour November 10th. It's going to be hitting October 14th. ACC, you're there. Congratulations, girl. Have a great time. Let me know what's the station that just hooked you up. Getting ready to drop an album in November, and yes, they had a hot single over the summer. Let's find out if you know which one it is. You didn't. You didn't hear the beginning of the countdown. Horrible. What's it called? No, it's not called shoot. Speaking of hot, we still have number two and your number one song in the top six of six coming up. And of course, you know, Rihanna, Eminem have been holding on to the top spot. So it should be interesting to see if they're still there today. Check it out. I've got a copy of Ice Cube's new album. It drops tomorrow and I'm going to give you a chance to win it right now. It's called I Am The West. Hit me up on the flow lines, 416-935-1935 and tell me what song came in at number six on our top six at six. Right now, we have to take a look at that drive. Swipe your SO Extra card and earn double points on eligible purchases of participating entries. Well, radio actually found me. Okay, how <laughs> so? Um, I got my start in the Bahamas. Um, there was one radio station over there that was government owned, and um, the government switched over and they gave out private licenses. So a couple of radio stations had applied and um, were starting, and uh, one of the safe stations that had started up was an urban adult contemporary station. And um, they had approached me because um, I had uh, some roommates who were DJs and a singer. Like these two guys, these brothers that I used to live with. And I used to go with them and open up for them and, you know, get on the mic and stuff and talk. This was a long time ago. And uh, anyway, um, I had met the DJs from the government station. So anyway, they approached me and asked me if I'd be interested because they were moving over to the private station. But I'd be interested in radio. So I was like, I don't know, sure, why not? So I did a two-week test and they hired me. And uh, I worked there for about six months. And then um, the first station that had opened up privately, which was called One Under Jams, approached me. And I went over there and started working there um, out of pure determination. So I went from having an actual show, a shift, doing like a midnight shift on the weekends, um, to answering the phones at 100 Jams. Because I figured if I could get in, once I'm there, I'm good. So I, um, I did that for a couple of months, and then just by sheer luck, the satellites broke down, and they were broadcasting two of the shows from Miami, the midday and the afternoon, so they had to move everybody up. So they had positions available, so they threw me in the midnight, 2 to 6, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, shift. And I did that for a couple of months, and then all of a sudden they threw me in the afternoon drive, which was absolutely yeah. terrifying. <laughs> um, and then um, I got thrown into the midday. And I was in the midday from 1995 until I moved here to Toronto, 2007. You moved here for radio, or you just moved here and then radio came an opportunity again. Yeah, I just, um, I came over here, I have a son, so I um, wanted to provide him some opportunities that you can't have in the islands, you know, living in the Bahamas. So I figured I had already hit, you know, the plateau of my career in the Bahamas. I couldn't go any further in radio. I was at the top of my game. So I was going to move to big Canada and try something different. And um, once you're in radio, you can't get out. It's uh, very infectious. <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship, and uh, I was so depressed being off the air for a couple of months that I, um, I approached all of the uh, program directors here in Toronto. And how I approached them was, you know, after being in radio for so many years, I know you can't just walk into a radio station and say, hey, I'm, a, you know, I'm an announcer, hire me. It's not going to happen. Um, so I was a little sneaky about it, and I um, sent them an air check. And uh, I said that I was looking for their advice on the market, that I was new in Toronto and, you know, if they would be willing to meet with me for a couple of minutes. And sure enough, they did. So I met with uh, the program director from Q107, um, Easy Rock at the time, um, 104, Chum, and I met with Wayne here at Flow. 
And uh, they all, you know, sat down and talked with me and said that, you know, they didn't have anything but blah, 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 and keep in touch, and I did. And uh, a couple months later, Wayne called me up and he's like, so what's going to take for you to move to Toronto? Because I was living in Halifax. My favorite time. Time, time period like, of the music. <laughs> um, I don't really have a favorite time period. I love new music. I love old music. I love everything. Um, I was, you know, really, I'm a big reggae lover, like, the reggae is, you know, close to my heart. Um, soca, I like. Can't handle soca all year round, but, uh, you know, I love it during Caravana. Periods, yeah. Um, hip-hop, I love hip-hop. As far as the old school hip-hop, I'm just being schooled on it because I was never exposed to it. Um, but honestly, since I came to Toronto and I came on the radio here, it was really exciting for me because, you know, I'm hearing some new music that mm -hmm. I've never heard before because I've already been exposed to all of the you really have amazing talent. What Very talented. What do the DJs, the promoters, radio hosts as yourself, radio hosts as yourself play in helping to brand these artists and give them that exposure? Oh, huge. Huge. First of all, if your song, if, if a DJ doesn't play your song in the club, people can't hear it. If a radio announcer doesn't talk about your music and bring attention to it, it's just going to get played and probably passed over. No one's going to know who it is. And that's something that I really made a point of doing when I came here because, like I said, I was so excited about the music when I was hearing it and um, it's like, oh, who's that? You know what I mean? Like some artist that, that really jumped out at me when I first came here was um, Kim Davis, Jay Diggs. Um, JD era, those are the first ones that I remember hearing and then trying to find out about them. You know what I mean? And you know, you'd ask around, you know, who's that artist? And people were like, oh, that's so and so, but do you know anything about them? Well, not really. So, what I did is I made a point of trying to find out about them and researching so that I can share that information with my listeners to get them as excited about the music as I was because I was excited about the songs, you know? And um, I think that's really important, and that's that's. That's how you can help brand an artist. Um, I get to play music all day. <laughs> um, my job's a party. <laughs> I don't have to sit behind a desk. Um, I'm my own boss while I'm on the air for four hours, you know? Um, and it's also therapy for me, you know? If I'm having a bad day, um, I have to forget about it because I have to make sure that I come here and give you 100% because there's people that, out there that are having a bad day and my job is to make sure that you have a good day. So I can't have a bad day. So it works for me in that sense.